Hi, and welcome back to the Packer TV. I'm Dean Cooper. And I'm Tamara Ferlansky. For those new to the webcast, the Packer TV is a new offering from the business newspaper of the produce industry. If I were to sum up today's cast in one word, it would be green. And I'd have to agree, Dean, because a little later we'll have a few stories on avocados and a new promo from Green Giant Fresh. But that's not all. Here's what else you can expect. Rock bottom tomato prices from Florida. PTI milestones are moved. And coverage from the National Restaurant Show. Tomato prices continue to plunge as heavy volume returns in central Florida. Eastern editor Doug Olmeyer says in late May, tomato prices had fallen to $5 for 25 pound cartons of mature greens, down from $20 in mid May. Central Florida production, which normally starts in early to mid April, didn't begin until mid May because of winter and spring freezes. Batista Madonia Jr., VP of Sales for East Coast Brokers and Packers, calls demand shameful. He says he was losing money by selling his tomatoes for $3 a box, plus the $2 industry handling fee. Though the deal is later this year, grower shippers say volume should go until mid-June, which is the normal season end. Even though the Produce Traceability Initiative's final deadline of December 2012 remains, it has pushed interim milestones back more than a year because of widespread concerns from the industry. The boards of directors of the CPMA, PMA and United Fresh have announced six recommendations relating to the PTI. Milestones 4, which is human readable information on all cases, and 5, GTIN and lot number in barcodes, has moved from the third quarter of this year to the end of 2011. This is the same date as Milestone 6, which calls for receivers to read and store information on inbound cases. A new part of the PTI calls for pilot projects to address specific challenges. The wave of chefs and restaurateurs looking to offer their customers food they can connect with is propelling interest in fresh produce. That interest was evident at the National Restaurant Association's annual restaurant hotel motel show May 22nd to 25th in Chicago. Food service writer Ashley Bentley reports the show attracted more than 58,000 registered attendees, up 6% from 2009, and it featured 1,700 exhibitors. Andrew Siegel, president of Fresh Connect, a fresh produce sales and marketing agency, found the section of the show floor lined with produce companies stayed particularly busy. Fresh Connect's clients, including Gill's Onion, Church Brothers, Herb Time, Chiquita, Prima Bella, and Rosa Cecilia Gourmet, exhibited on both sides of an aisle, so attendees walking through were surrounded by fresh produce. Grower shippers expect the Florida avocado harvest to begin in early June, with promotable volume by early to mid-July, so that means buyers should see a later crop this summer. Peter Schnebley, co-owner and CEO of Fresh King, says this is not a typical year. With the two freezes we had this winter, we could be two to three weeks late. We will be fine with the fruit we have, but it should be slow with the start of the harvest. Before a windstorm struck growing regions in late April, Bill Brindle, VP of Sales for Brooks Tropicals, said the industry was hoping for a harvest around 1.1 million bushels, but it will be a little bit lower. Brooks expects to ship about half of Florida's volume, around half a million bushels. Now speaking of avocados, people recently had the chance to see a demonstration of a marketing campaign that increased Mexican avocado volume in Canada by more than 40% last fall. Faye Clack Communications worked with Mexico's Opium and set up a demo at a downtown Vancouver Safeway store as part of a tour of Mexican products for that country's Secretary of Agriculture. This happened during the Canadian Produce Marketing Association's convention in mid-May. Retail editor Pamela Riemenschneider says the promotion also includes Opium's brand ambassador, a character named Avocado. That promo was so successful that half a year later, Mexican avocado volumes are still up more than 20%. Green Giant Fresh is taking social media to a new level with its latest promotion, tying in with Facebook's popular virtual farming game Farmville. Certain Green Giant Fresh product packages at Target stores now have coupons with a code that can be redeemed for virtual money in the online game. The coupon will appear on celery, 
romaine hearts, carrots, potatoes, and other packaged produce items. Each coupon is redeemable online at thegiant.com for five free farm cash, a Farmville currency players use for their farms. Now, Dean, do you know that 80 million people worldwide play Farmville? I did not know that. Yeah, so a lot of people are going to be excited about this one. Well, I'm sure they will be. Well, now it's time to hear from Greg Johnson for the Packer Editorial Board's opinion about defining local. There are many winners with the local movement. So why all the fuss about defining what local is? We're not talking about organic, which can and must be verified. Local should be defined by consumers, not government busybodies. In May, Maryland's governor signed a law allowing the state's ag department to define locally grown and restrict its use. This will only cause more consumer confusion. Rather than ask, is it local? Consumers more often say, tell me where it's grown and I'll tell you if it's local to me. Retailers are smart enough to serve consumers and give them choices. Government should be too. This is Greg Johnson for the Packer Editorial Board. Thanks, Greg. Now, I have a question both for you and you. How do you guys define local? That's a good question. It could mean different things. It can, and we want to know how you define local. So feel free to share your comments and thoughts right below this video player. And if you missed our last webcast, be sure to visit our archive section and get caught up. And we'll see you next week.